Morning. So, as educators, we've all had teaching moments that we will remember forever. Really good ones and really bad ones. Now, when we have exhilarating moments, we rarely critically analyze why things went well. We just assume, oh, I did a good job of organizing. I, I was well prepared. I, I did good. But when you have disastrous teaching moments, you really sit back and analyze what went wrong, why things went wrong, and what would you do in the future to prevent such problems, right? So I'm going to share with you one such disastrous uh, story that shaped my life as an educator. And I tried very hard to find humorous ways to make a disastrous story light and funny. Did not succeed. So please, laugh at the wrong times. Laugh when you sh when I sh I'm not laughing, so I can laugh with you. <laughs> so this was my first, very first tenure track position. And I was asked to teach a class outside my specialty area, OK? So the class was curriculum for students with emotional disturbances. My specialization is in severe developmental and intellectual disabilities. So there's still some difference in content. Now, in my field of special education, a lot of people come into the field because they have a family member with a disability. They want to know, want to know more about teaching techniques and curricula, et cetera. So this was like a test of credibility for an instructor because there were many students in this class who actually had severe emotional disturbances themselves and were in the program to find solutions for problems in their lives. So my very first class, OK? Actually, I have to tell you this. So many students in that class were non-traditional students. Some of them worked in juvenile detention centers. Two of them were prison guards. And one student actually was a bouncer in a nightclub. He was six and a half foot tall, burly, and actually slept a lot in class. And his name was Angel. OK. <laughs> so. One of those days when I had to give an exam in class, this was at a time when we didn't have online courses. Everything was on paper. And I had asked a staff person in my department to make 38 copies of the exam. So the staff person made copies, put it on my desk. And then when I was ready to go teach class, I picked up the packet and went. Mistake number one. If you ask somebody to make copies for you, always count if you have the appropriate number of copies, OK? And I did not. So while distributing the exams, I realized that I was three copies short. My class was in a different building than my office. And so at that time, we used to have copy machine-specific copy cards in that university. You could not use that card across any other department's copy machine. So. I'm lost. I'm thinking, what do I do? How do I make three copies? I need copies more. So I got one student to volunteer to be a proctor in the class, keep an eye on the student so I could go make copies. Mistake number two, right? <laughs> you never leave the class. If you're short of something, you want to make copies, you stay in class, send a student outside, and say, go make copies, because they know where all the copy machines are. And you can always pay them later, right? So that was mistake number two. But when I returned 15 minutes later, the proctor told me, here are the names of six people in class who were cheating while you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, OK, thank you. And then I let them, uh, three people, work on their exams. So then when those six students were done uh, with the exam, they came to hand in the paper. I said, please stay back after class. I need to talk with you. OK? So everybody's gone, and those six people stay. And I asked them, so what happened when I was gone for 15 minutes from this class? Mistake number three. You never have a pack of six students with emotional disturbances all together as a group trying to talk to them about what went wrong when the problem was with the instructor, right? So long story short, these six students tried to find all kinds of excuses. But then later, they 
cornered the proctor in the parking lot, threatened to hurt her, dented her car, and things went really wrong. So that proctor came and talked to me uh, later on about what happened. And so I had to go talk to the department chair and said, well, we need to do something. So the department chair brought, brought all the six students in the office and said, if they threatened to hurt anybody or even do anything that was considered uh, an act of violence, they would be expelled from the university. Well, that was no comfort because the damage was already done. So mistake number four, when students threaten an act of violence, you have to involve the campus police. You can't just, I mean, you have to talk to the department chair, but you can't worry about, oh, our department's name is going to be out there in the university. People will know we didn't do a good job of you know, classroom management, stuff like that. But long story short, Hindsight is 2020, right? This never happened ever again before. And I'm telling you, over the years, I've become pretty good at teaching. This is an evidence of that. I wouldn't have gotten a scarf from the university if, I, that, if that was not the case. But think about, think about all the wonderful lessons that I would not have learned if I had, made, if I had counted all the copies at the start of the uh, you know, class. So sometimes, we learn so many lessons uh, when things go wrong. So just to, so all the, those people who are kind of relatively new to teaching or trying to find your way back or whatever, keep in mind, no incident is actually a disastrous incident, even when it is, because there's something to learn for every single thing that happens wrong in life. Thank you.